Hello and welcome to Everton's Greatest FA Cup Victories, Volume 2. Everton have won the FA Challenge Cup four times, 1906, 1933, 1966 and 1984. The finals of 66 and 84 have been covered in Volume 1 of this series, but you know there's more to the FA Cup than reaching and winning at Wembley. Every round is a challenge and has a special passion unique to the FA Cup. In this volume we shall be concentrating on Everton's greatest decade of success, the 1980s, when they played no fewer than 59 cup matches, reaching the final four times, three of those in successive years. We start in 81 with the goal from the fifth round replay against Southampton and then on to the year they achieved the ultimate, 1984, to see the fourth and fifth rounds being settled and the goal at Highbury that put them into the final. In 1985, an historic third round victory over Leeds at Helland Road and then three matches from 86, Spurs in the fifth round and two games to decide the quarter-final with Luton. In 88, it took Everton seven matches to get through the third and fourth rounds. We shall look at the last of those, the second replay against Middlesbrough. 89 and Everton get to the final. We'll feature five matches from that year. And we end in the new decade with two goals from Norman Whiteside. Let's start now in 1981. A fifth round replay against Southampton. The teams have drawn nil-nil at the Dell. Lions has raced forward. Easto's in the centre too. Lions flicks it on. Oh, and he's through. And he's scored a keep of the three hours and 12 minutes. Yes, Eamon O'Keefe settling that replay in extra time. 1984 now, and this time a second replay away to Gillingham. The teams had twice drawn nil-nil. Howard Kendall had taken over from Gordon Lee in the summer of 81, and one of his most inspirational signings was Andy Gray, £250,000 from Wolves. His experience put Everton back on the trophy trail. It may have taken Everton three matches to defeat their third division opponents, but once they'd made the decisive breakthrough, Everton in the black shorts were comfortable winners. Significantly, they brought back Andy Gray, and he was involved in all three goals. From Peter Reid's cross, Gray's header allowed Kevin Sheedy to score the first. Just five minutes later, Everton made it 2-0, with Gray, who was preferred in attack to Graham Sharp, this time providing an accurate centre. And the alertness of Adrian Heath beat the Gillingham defence, Heath nipping in to head his ninth goal in the last eight games. Everton's third goal in the space of just 10 minutes clinched their place in the fifth round. And Everton fans in the 16,000 crowd celebrated Kevin Sheedy's second goal of the game. Poor defending by Gillingham, but a fine piece of finishing by Sheedy. 3-0 winners then over the third division side, but it took five hours. In the fifth round, it's second division Shrewsbury Town at Goodison, and things were to go much better for the home side. Peter Reid set up Alan Irvin to give Everton a goal advantage by half-time. In the second half, Everton completely outplayed their second division opponents and following some good football on the right-hand side, Peter Reid helped himself to a goal from 12 yards to make it 2-0. Everton added a third near the end, Reid again very much involved. Substitute Graham Sharp plays the ball to Andy Gray and his fierce cross is turned in for an own goal. Andy doesn't mind that, he's happy to take the credit. In the sixth round, Notts County were dispatched 2-1 and this is the semi-final goal against Southampton at Highbury. Adrian Heath heading Everton to Wembley. Kevin Ratcliffe was to lift the cup for Everton for the fourth time in their history. Howard Kendall glowing with satisfaction. Highlights of this 1984 victory and other great FA Cup victories can be seen in Volume 1 of this series. The following year, Everton were again in the final, but as we've said, every FA Cup match has something special. And in the third round against Leeds in 85, Elland Road was packed. Howard Kendall's team showed only two changes from the Wembley side. Pat Vanden Howe had arrived from Birmingham and Paul Bracewell from Sunderland. 
Everton hadn't won at Leeds for 33 years. In 28 visits since the 51-52 season, they'd had seven draws and 21 defeats, including the 1980 semi-final replay against West Ham. Sheridan for Leeds. Hampson. Sellers. Reed. Stevens. Gray's begun to run now, and he got away from the defender, did Andy Gray, and he got a header down to Bracewell. And Everton's first worthy attack. And the old-fashioned policy of playing it high towards Andy Gray, where he's in his element, competing for crosses like that, pays off again. Stevens knew where the ball had to go because Gray had got a couple of yards away from his marker, as you could see. He got the header down, Bracewell's angled drive across the face of the goal mood of the match is that Leeds know their best chance of winning this tie is here and McCluskey's away and Stevens in trying to stop him has conceded a corner now Aspin and Linigan both useful in the air making their way forward Aspin will go into the six yard box and Linigan will hang around about 15 yards out to make his run Number five. And he didn't quite get contact. Sheridan did. And it came off an Everton player who I think was Mountfield. And it's a corner. Lorimer to take this one. Aspin, Linigan as well. Leeds pressing. Lorimer. Really driven. And Everton for the moment being examined. Lorimer again. Played square. Sheridan. Useful period that from Leeds. Two corners. And the one played in by Sellers there dropped at the feet of uh, Sheridan and Mountfield didn't quite know where it was going, but it went to safety. Rain or sleet is now falling, just softening up the uh, top surface. Sharp with Linigan. Peels for handball and the linesman's packing penalty. Penalty, Linigan handball seen by the linesman who put his flag across his chest and gave the penalty which the referee was happy to endorse while david richardson is pointing to the spot leads have gone across to that linesman alan flood with the yellow flag but he was near the incident a good view and linigan was penalized a penalty to everton Graham Sharp has taken the responsibility from the spot recently and he's aiming for his 20th goal of the season and he gets it. The holders are in the lead. Eddie Gray's side, four behind, four minutes before half-time. Graham Sharp the scorer and this is how it happened. The ball bubbled about a little bit. Sharp was there and watched Linigan, the number five, on the left arm it seemed. The referee looked across, linesman gave it Everton in the lead. Sheridan. Only one way for Leeds to go now. Reed for Everton. Stephen on the edge of the area. He was bundled. Play goes on. I think Linigan's just perhaps lost his place for a moment Gray's over on the far side for Everton here and Stephen just over that could have killed Leeds off I think maybe the penalty award has unsettled the centre half who made another mistake just there allowing in the end Vanden Howe to cross Andy Gray to get up the ball fell for Trevor Stephen just over the angle so uneasy times for Linigan And 
sharp and Bracewell breaking away. Andy Gray's in the centre and Trevor Stephen was also. And a couple of half chances have fallen to him and he struck them both over. Good break by Paul Bracewell who in his unpretentious way is a quickly developing midfield player. He provided the cross here. Andy Gray was in the centre. He couldn't reach it. Stephen sliced it well wide. Mountfield has been solid at centre-half. Ratcliffe alongside him likewise and Sharp turning well up front. Well, Stephen, Trevor Stephen picking a way through here and brought down by Aspin on the edge of the area to put Everton in a threatening position. Sheedy with his left foot can often curl them from here, number 11 he is. And Sheedy hits the bar. Gray's coming in for the rebound with the goalkeeper. And Sheedy again. And in the net. And 2-0. And Sheedy got the reward that that tremendous free kick deserved. The poor goalkeeper lying in the back of the net. Half injured and half dejected. Sheedy blusted that. The keeper saw it crash back off the bar. Up went Andy Gray. A flat from the goalkeeper. Sheedy comes in. The keeper got his hands to it but couldn't keep it out and Everton lead 2-0. Ian Atkins, who played in some famous cup ties for Shrewsbury Town when he was there, is the man who's come on. Stevens has gone off and you're watching the goal that appears to have settled the game. By Sheedy. We're into the last minute and the Everton fans well pleased. Everton the first side through to the fourth round of this season's FA Cup. Well, on their way to Wembley, Everton beat Doncaster Rovers, then non-league Telford United, Ipswich Town in the quarter-final and Luton 2-1 in the semi-final before being beaten at Wembley, Norman Whiteside scoring the only goal for Manchester United. But 1985 was to be the most successful in the club's history. They were league champions for the eighth time, won the European Cup Winners' Cup, were beaten finalists in the FA Cup and swept the board in individual honours. Howard Kendall was named Manager of the Year, the captain Peter Reid was voted PFA Player of the Year, and the goalkeeper Neville Southall was selected by the Football Writers Association as their Player of the Year. Not a bad collection of titles in one season, is it? Fifth round action now, and in 1986, the sort of draw every club would want to avoid spurs at White Hart Lane. The Everton side has a familiar look to it, although Pat Vanden Howe wears number five for the injured Derek Mountfield. And at number eight, the £800,000 bargain of the century from Leicester City, Gary Lineker, of course. Gary was with the club just one season, scoring 38 league and cup goals in 52 games. Here's Harper. Now Richardson. And Sharp, good running by Bracewell here. Lineker's in the centre, and did Clements bring Bracewell down? The referee has backed away, and the Everton players clustered round him momentarily, but they've now subdued the protest, and nothing apart from a goal kick. One or two Tottenham Hearts missed a beat here. Clements and Bracewell, no penalty. This is Waddle. Glenn Hoddle has stolen forward on the far side. Stevens! The Tottenham plan was to play Waddle deeper and get the other midfield players up into the box. And it happened there. Waddle supplied the cross. Gary Stevens and Hoddle were both in there. And it was Gary Stevens who made the contact. 
There's 15 minutes gone and it's a stormy opening here. Spurs have a free kick against Van den Howe. Hoddle with Perryman, close to the ball. Hoddle takes. And Mathers! And out from under the bar by Sharp, I think. With a good clearance anyway. Gary Mathers was unlucky. And he's finished up in a terrible state. Just look at that. He beat Southall with the header, but I think it was Sharp back defending there, the number nine. It's a corner to Spurs. Played back for Hoddle. Well, Tottenham created a chance from that free kick, and it fell to Gary Mabbott, who did all he could have done. You can see how he finished up. But the concern for Everton is far worse, because Kevin Ratcliffe is clearly injured. Hoddle took the free kick. Mabbott was perfectly positioned. The header was ideal, but... Sharp, the defender, or rather the centre-forward in a defensive position, saves Everton. Ratcliffe goes off, and Adrian Heath replaces him. Well, those people who argue for summer football, I have to say, have got a point. This ludicrous, chaotic FA Cup season now has been made even worse by pitches being flooded. Fortunately, here at Tottenham, this surface is so good, they can carry on playing. Everton naming here to get into the last eight of the FA Cup for the sixth time in the last seven seasons. That was Hoddle. Waddle. Bent in well. Falco and Hoddle. Falco was there! And the touch took the ball the wrong side of the post. Neville Southall picks him up, but Waddle put the ball in. Falco and Hoddle were arriving here at a rate of knots. Waddle's ball in was bent beautifully, and it was Falco who stretched out the left foot, but wide. Everton with this healthy lead in the championship race, trying to retain that title, and also, remember, trying to reach the FA Cup final for the third year running. Winners in 84, runners-up last year. That's Sharp, here's Stephen, and this is Lineker. And Sharp goes in! And it's going to come to Heath, and a goal! By Adrian Heath, the substitute. Six minutes into the second half, Everton show their pedigree. Under man, they may be in defence, but dangerous in attack. The whip ball in, Clements didn't collect, Sharp didn't connect, but Adrian Heath, who's a pilferer of goals from those positions, marks his arrival as the substitute by putting Everton in front. So, the side in form take the lead against the club out of form. This is Roberts. Well, Tottenham now are going to be fighting the, the fiercest battle they've had all season. They've just got to keep plugging away and hope to get it back. This is Perryman. Otherwise, there's very little left for them on the horizon. Perryman's cross forces the corner. This is Waddle. And Falco and off the line. Harper and Richardson both back there. Harper, I think it was. This is Perryman to Waddle. And a corner again as Spurs throw everything in. They've got to do. Falco was so unlucky, he beat Southall there, but nothing's going for him. And Stevens gets up to head it on. Hoddle with the drive. And Falco was so unlucky. 
Alan Harper in the right place. On by Sharp. There's Lineker and Trevor Stephen may get free. Sharp waiting in the centre, so is Lineker, so is Heath. Oh, and it was Paul Allen. We've been playing for an hour. Everton lead 1-0. Vanden Howe has gone to the near post. Lineker is standing by the far post. Lineker had the first header, Vanden Howe had the chance, stabbed it, and Clement stopped it right on the line. The corner swung in dangerously for Lineker to have a free header in actual fact. The marking terrible, and Vanden Howe might be unhappy that he didn't make it 2-0. The Spurs are not inventing anything, that's the reason why Everton are coping at the moment quite comfortably. What can Waddle do? That's a better ball. And Hoddle! They've been trying to get him into a striking position all night. And now hit the outside of the goal. Waddle made the initial impression down the left. This time it was too long for Falco. Poynton may have got half a touch and into the side netting by Glenn Hoddle. Oh, and Robertson steams in each other's way, and Sharp's away here for Everton. Lineker's unmarked in the centre. Allen trying to get to him. Here's Stephen. And again, Trevor Stephen. And Lineker! And he's buried it! And he may have buried Tottenham season two. The 74th minute. Everton go two goals up. And it's Gary Lineker's 32nd of the season for them. The cross was by Trevor Stephen. Tottenham again left him totally unmarked. And how do you expect Lineker to miss from there? He doesn't. Chidozzi, great save by Southall. Chidozzi can't believe it. Well, was that Spurs chance to pull something back? Falco headed it on. Chidozzi did the right thing. He tried to lob the goalkeeper, but what a fine stretching save by Southall. This is Chidozzi. And Falco, yes! They've got one back. Just ten minutes from the end, Spurs at last have a say. Mark Falco with a perfectly placed header from the cross by the substitute, John Chidozzi. This time, he got up well and planted that wide of Southall, who could do nothing about it. Now then, the crowd suddenly sense that there may be something in it for Tottenham after all. Peter Shreve knows there's an awful lot on the line here. Bear in mind, it's the first meeting. A draw here would mean, after 90 minutes, a replay at Goodison on Friday, and Spurs haven't given up hope of that yet. It's Danny Thomas with the throw. This is Waddle. Spurs look anxiously towards the linesman, but referee John Martin has given a free kick, I think. But Gary Mabbard here, number seven, the ball came off him, and amazing, Vanden Howe, I thought it was over the line for a minute. Was it Vanden Howe hooked it out the first time? Certainly it hit a defender the second time, and then Southall caught it.
That was the last chance of the game as referee John Martin blows the final whistle to the boos of the home crowd. The next venue was Kenilworth Road for a difficult sixth round tie on Luton's plastic pitch. These two sides had met in the semi-final a year earlier in a match Everton won 2-1 with a last minute goal by Kevin Sheedy. This time Luton get off to a flyer. Step. Steen chasing, Harper across. A line of four waiting in the area for Luton. Foster joined them. Hill, chance for Harford! Nick Harford's got it. Luton have taken the lead at almost the same time in the match as they did in the semi-final last year. And again, Ricky Hill was involved. It was from the throw-in. Foster helped it on. Hill's shot was partially blocked. And Mick Harford, the man who at the moment just about everybody is talking about, tucks the ball away for his 19th goal of the season. Greece. Bit short that though, and Stephen got it away from Mitchell Thomas. Back to Stevens, driven in for Lineker, sharp, it went straight through him. Oh, Lineker! And sharp couldn't finish it. I think it was Donaghy who got it out from behind the goalkeeper. Where the marking on Lineker was there, I've no idea. I don't think Foster had either. He was completely free. So the score remains 1-0 to Luton. Against an Everton side who are bidding for their third consecutive trip to Wembley in the FA Cup, remember? Here's Nicholas, Brees, Steen, Sharp, well played, and then Bracewell, now Lineker, comes left again, Richardson this time, Sharp and Lineker in the centre, and Lineker, oh that was so close, and he showed there this terrific flair that he's produced since he left Leicester for the headed goal. So many of his Everton efforts this season have come from headers and from Richardson's cross he came smoothly between two defenders to reach the ball unhindered and put it just agonisingly wide. Stevens. Sharp up. Turning it on. Oh, lots of space for Richardson. The right back had got pulled right in with the central defenders, and Richardson was in a lot of room. Usually a reliable finisher. The shot just too high on this occasion, but a warning to Luton. Waiting to volley it. Harper got in the way and Reed did volley it. Lineker, a nice touch to Sharp, but he'll go for the return. Foster in the way. And Donaghy finds Nicholas. King and Steen's through. Onside. What a chance for Luton. And it's still a chance for Luton. And Steen has done it. 2 0. And 20 year old Mark Steen. The hero of Kenilworth Road for the second time in four days. And the offside track was sprung by the through ball and Steen was all on his own. Southall came out, he made the first block, but Steen was quick enough of mind and body to recover and see the chance to retrieve it and steer it in. Foul by Donaghy on Sharp.
Adrian Heath comes on, Neil points and goes off. So it's Stevens with the kick for Everton. And it's a difficult one, and it's there by Sharp. Graham Sharp has scored, and Everton are back in it. The free kick curled in, and Sharp seemed to get there ahead of Foster and get the header in, and Everton have replied within two minutes. Here's Richardson, and Ricky Hill having to play almost as a full-time defender for the moment. Lineker over the head against Foster, Heath, it's there! Adrian Heath has equalised, the two-goal lead is wiped out, and Heath comes on as serve and does the trick again. The Everton supporters celebrate a cut tie which looked lost, and suddenly it would appear been saved. The Luton defenders look disconsolate, but Adrian Heath, who popped up with a goal after coming on at Tottenham, has gone and done it again with 13 minutes to go. Gone again, Sharp. Harford. Heath to Reid. And onside, Lineker. Good save by Seeley. He's kept Luton in the cut there. And Lineker, this deadly marksman, held his head. He's sent it out, his 33rd goal of the season there, all right. Clean through, the flag stayed down. And Seeley, going to his right, made a fine save. 2-0 to Luton once, now 2-2. And a replay looming. An uncharacteristic miss then by Lineker, or was it good goalkeeping by Les Seeley? In a season when Gary was so prolific, we'll credit the goalkeeper. The final score, 2-2, Everton having come from two goals down to take the tie to Goodison and give themselves another opportunity of getting to the semi-finals. Sheffield Wednesday awaited the winners, and before long, Lineker was back to his tricks. Steen and Hill. Hill again. Now a long ball for Lineker to chase and just look at his pace. The pace of Gary Lineker brings his 33rd goal of the season. When he started the chase for that long clearance that came from very deep in Everton's half, he seemed to be a yard and a half behind the defenders, but when he got to the ball, he was half a yard ahead of them. And that's why Gary Lineker is the top marksman in Britain. Pointed. Again, Everton keeping possession. Oh, Sharp has to be two. Well, in defence of Graham Sharp, I don't think he could believe that because it came to him through the legs of the defender. Went through his own legs and then he turned and scooped at it and put it wide. David Priest. So quickly the Everton players are closing him down. Harford for Priest. So David Priest. Luton get it back. And Mitchell Thomas. Harford knocks it down for Steen! Well, young Mark Steen playing the biggest match of his career tonight in this quarter-final replay was set up there by Mick Harford, the big centre forward, who won it in the box, knocked it down for him. And Steen turned and knocked it wide, and that was a golden opportunity, and there won't be many of those for Luton tonight. It's broken for Sharp. Bracewell. Oh, that came off the fullback Johnson. As far as Lineker, who was brought down by Seeley, and it's a penalty. 
well, that stemmed from the mistake by the fullback Rob Johnson. He missed it, it ran past him to Gary Lineker. And as ever, the Lineker speed was there and evident. Sealy quickly off his line, brought down the Everton striker. The referee looked across at the linesman and then after some hesitation, decided that the offence was inside the box. It's a penalty for Everton, but don't forget, Luton were two up in the first match at Kenilworth Road on Saturday. And Everton came back to make it 2-2. Trevor Stephen. Good start by Seeley and behind by Maldonachy. And how important might that save be at the end of this match? Well, Trevor Stephen probably didn't strike it quite as well as he would have wished, but a good stop by the keeper. Lineker chesting it down for Bracewell and Sharp! Foster was there, but Sharp got to it first. A snapshot at goal, and Seely went down to make a very good save, right by the foot of the post. Ricky Hill. Nicholas for David Priest. And Daniel! Oh! He's hit the post! Luton's best chance. As Nicholas is penalised for a foot up against Bracewell. And I'm sure there was a moment of frustration there for Peter Nicholas because Luton were within inches of equalising. The substitute, Ray Daniel, who's only scored once previously this season, with the goal at his mercy, and he hit it against the post. So Everton went into the semi-final against Sheffield Wednesday, where goals from Alan Harper and Graham Sharp took them to their third successive final, this time against Liverpool. Lineker opened the scoring, but Everton were runners-up again. Gary was now off to Barcelona for two and a half million, with the PFA and the Football Writers Player of the Year awards under his belt. 1988 and a fourth round second replay against second division Middlesbrough. The sides had drawn one each at Goodison and then 2-2 at Ayrson Park. And in the previous round, it had taken Everton four matches to beat Sheffield Wednesday, eventually by 5-0. The decision by referee Ray Lewis to allow such an important replay to go ahead in swirling snow and rain and with wind gusts of 70 miles an hour was a brave if debatable one. But all credit to Everton and Borough for the way they set about the task at hand. From the start, Everton, with Trevor Stephen fit and Paul Power playing his first senior game since September, took the game to their opponents. As early as the seventh minute, there was a good chance for Adrian Heath. Perhaps Heath should have done better, but you really have to appreciate how difficult it was for both defenders and attackers to judge the flight of the ball. With the gale at their backs in the first half, Everton were rarely doing anything other than attack. And although they used the conditions to their advantage, it wasn't all kick and rush. There was a lot of quality football on view as well, although Graham Sharp seemed to share Heath's anxiety in front of goal. It didn't take him long to make amends. One minute later, Burrow, who were trying to keep the ball on the ground and play it to feet, overdid it slightly and were made to pay. They lost possession, and Peter Reid delivered the killer pass to Sharp. Sharp's 19th goal of the season, and his sixth in the current FA Cup campaign. But I must say I enjoyed the seemingly tireless Peter Reid's contribution just as much as Sharp's clinical finish. But with 62 minutes gone and after Borough had again survived, the tie suddenly turned yet again. A huge boot upfield found substitute Kernahan's head. Paul Kerr then took on Gary Stevens quite brilliantly. And Stuart Ripley finished the job. Five thousand travelling Middlesbrough fans suddenly sounded like fifty thousand. And why not? It was a terrific goal in every respect. Time was running out fast by now, but Everton kept their cool and built attacks patiently. This next one sees Heath set up Trevor Stephen. A good save from Stephen Pears, which came 12 minutes from the end. 
The tension for both sets of fans was now almost unbearable. But as the tie entered its 292nd minute, and with just seven minutes left of the game, Everton took the lead again. Middlesbrough lost possession, and Everton surged forward. Trevor Stephen then ran at opponents as he had all night, found Gary Stevens in support, and the fullback's fiercely delivered low cross flew off Tony Mowbray's boot into his own net. The Borough skipper fell to the ground in anguish, totally understandable when you remember that it was his header in the dying seconds that took the first replay at Ayrson Park into extra time. Everton went out of the 1988 competition in the next round, losing 1-0 to Liverpool. The next season saw Colin Harvey in charge and Everton at Wembley for the fourth time in the 80s, but it wasn't easy. The second division West Bromwich Albion were their third round opponents, and at the Hawthorns they were to surprise their first division superiors fairly early on. Torbets. Lots and lots of room for Hopkins. Palmer waiting to go. Surely went too soon, but the flag stayed down. Goodman's OK, of course, from the throw. That's a peach of a cross, and that's a lovely goal. Anderson, the scorer. A quite superb cross. It passed the nearer Albion player, but sat up nicely for Anderson to meet with his head and to give Albion the lead they hugely deserve. Corbett's. Gave himself unnecessary industry then, Brian Corbett. Sheedy. Looking for Trevor Stephen. And the linesman flagging on the far side. Play continues, referee acknowledged. The long flag came down. Oh, that's not the best of challenges. That could well have been an escape for West Bromwich Albion. A uh, free kick has been given. And it's been given outside the area. And I must say that looked to me to be inside. Doesn't matter the direction the player was moving in. challenge was a little wild and the penalty is given well the referee by consulting his linesman I am sure has come up with the correct decision it was a wild challenge at the moment when there was no obvious danger but that last fact is irrelevant. If it's a foul inside the area, a deliberate foul, it is a penalty. Sheedy takes it and scores. It's 1-1. One, one. Huge relief for the Everton team and their supporters. On the balance of play, they do not deserve to be level. But they were given the opportunity, and Kevin Sheedy took it with his usual aplomb. Good times when White doesn't seem to have judged the jump right, but has, in fact. Goodman again. Paskin in the middle, Palmer going there as well, so is Hopkins, good ball on his own, it's a fine save, comes to Paskin, and it was Hopkins shot I think, that was saved by the feet of Southall. Not for the first time, the Welsh international goalkeeper keeps his team in the contest. They were queuing up then to put that one away, but they couldn't find the right one to finish, free kick is given. Great start from Neville Southall. Goodman, who made the gap, went straight through the middle, tried to aim it wide of the goalkeeper. And from the parry, there were two players waiting to beat Southall. But in the end, the goalkeeper was the victor again to deny Hopkins.
Nevin. Good play. And a bit too precise from Kevin Cheedy. At least he tried to be precise, but some good play by Pat Nevin. Good save in the match. And it looked easier to put it in than over, but he had the stretch for it. And he shakes his head, having got underneath the ball. And a fine save by Paul Bradshaw. Those goalkeeping heroics from Paul Bradshaw gave West Brom another chance of claiming a first division scalp. Now it's the replay at Goodison in what was to be the most difficult tie on Everton's road to Wembley. North again, but not as comfortably this time. Ratcliffe. Van den Howe. Free kick against Torbert for a deliberate body check. And the applause, probably saw the referee sign is for the return of Goodman. Well won by Palmer. And very unlucky, Kevin Sheedy. it in uh, typical fashion on the ball and curled away North Darren Bradley Robson they needed a third player and they didn't have one Nevin. Beautifully done. Sheedy. Nevin. Well, a little Scotsman who came from Chelsea looks in good nick. It was a lovely cross on the volley again, but straight across the face of the goal, and then Nevin well wide. Trace that. Clark, the one to hold it. Nevin. Cotty. Alderston. Only to read. Cotty. Clark. Still Clark. No way. Reeds. Still Reeds. Incredible stuff. And over the top from Nevin. Shake of the head. Been no better summary. Ball stuck in the area then. Clark trying to find a way through. That was a good challenge. Nothing the matter with it. Certainly was an attempt to get the ball. Reed suddenly popped up. Finally out to Nevin and over.
Snowden. Clark. Torbett. Sheedy goes to the crowd to take the congratulations. The equaliser on Saturday. And maybe the winner in the replay. It was aggression on the edge of the area that won it in the first place. Poynton came in with feet fairly high, it should be said, and Sheedy coming in on the left of Poynton to give Everton the lead. That late goal from Sheedy put them into round four, which also required a replay. They beat Plymouth 4-0 after a 1-1 draw at home park. Next, Everton are again drawn away, this time at Barnsley. Barnsley's record in uh, 1989 is pretty impressive. They've been unbeaten in the last seven games, three wins and four draws. A sequence which began with that 4-0 defeat of Chelsea in the third round. Snowden. Nicely turned around Futcher. Stephen to knock it in first time. Cotty wasn't tall enough. Sharp! Oh, yes! Well, that must have been the first real opening that Everton have carved in the opening 15 minutes. And they put it away with aplomb. Graham Sharp's eighth goal of the season. But it was a good early ball by Trevor Stephen. Cotty wasn't quite tall enough to get to it. But Graham Sharp was completely unmarked and tucked it in at the foot of the post. Well, that's a blow to Barnsley. Sharp's goal was enough, and the reward was a home draw in the quarter-finals against the cup holders from Wimbledon. Header out was by Fashionu, defending the near post area. Ratcliffe. Good ball back by the captain to Sheedy. Beautifully done by Sheedy. Four waiting for the cross. Here's the handball. The flag's up, but Keith Hackett has got his arm up. It may have been Fashinu. It was number nine, I think, John Fashinu, who had his arm out. Yes, it was, look. Well, Besson saved one in the cup final. What can Segers do? Save that one as well. Well, what about this? I said they'd had a few problems with penalties. It wasn't a good kick, was it? It goes sharp. Cotty's on the far side. Stephen coming up in the inside right position. McDonald. McCall, the space here. Cotty. Little turn. Sheedy. Cotty, Bracewell, Bracewell again, back in, it's there, McCall, Stuart McCall, got the touch, and the fans thrilled to bits at Goodison, because that Everton period has paid off, and McCall sneaked in front of Segers, after Sheedy had done valiant work, as indeed had Bracewell. He battled away there, Bracewell. But when it came out, Sheedy got the ball in and McCall stabbed it from inside the six-yard box. And Everton have taken the lead, and it's deserved after one hour. But Bracewell's sheer persistence breaks down Wimbledon. Sheedy got the ball in so quickly, McCall got his foot out, and it's 1-0. And this young man scores only his second goal since joining Everton from Bradford City. And what a vital goal it may prove to be. The new boy, McCall, had saved Chops, blushes, and the cup holders were out. Villa Park was the venue for the semi-final. The opposition, Norwich City, who'd been in good form in the league and had an excellent FA Cup tradition. So although this was Everton's fifth semi-final in nine years, Norwich were narrow favourites. Bowen, that's a good run by Crook. 
Patne. Rosario is in the middle. Up comes Dale Gordon. Oh, he struck it well. Fine strike. And he thought it was worth the corner. But he's not to get it. They've got caught a bit. Gordon had quite a distance to make. Sheedy was the player who came across. There was only one option. And I must say, I think Dale Gordon is right that he should have got a corner. Seemed to be to get two deflections. The first off Sheedy, the second off Southall. Sheedy. And he looked up and saw Potty going one way and Sharp the other. So Everton throw. Bracewell. Crook looked in horror, thought for a moment he'd escaped, but the little fellow was there, and among a few whirling legs, he managed to get the one which counted. Goalkeeper going one way, back off the angle. Sharp comes again off Crook. Bowen comes off the back line, and it's Nevin who has scored for Everton. So Wembley beckoned again, but there was bitter disappointment for Colin Harvey and his team. Hard pill to swallow. We leave you in the next decade, a fourth round tie against Sheffield Wednesday, but more a tribute to Norman Whiteside. He scored both goals in this 2-1 victory. There's the first. David Hurst equalised for Wednesday. But Whiteside settled the tie a few minutes later, sending Everton into the fifth round.